Hi, my name is Glory. I'm a second year student studying at the Bartlett School of Architecture in London, originally from Hong Kong. And I'm Yan Shan, a second year architecture student, and I'm into musicals, oil painting, movies, and embarrassingly into self help and Richie Biscuits. You're listening to Designing Thoughts with the Archie Gals, a podcast where we talk about working and creativity, living well, the human condition with relationships, and life experiences. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our podcast. So, I'm your host, Glory, and this is my co host, Yen Shan. And today, we're going to be talking about group projects, specifically why they fail, some of our stories, and also what makes a successful group project. So, we're going to first, I guess, talk about our own story with group projects because I think we both had our fair share of terrible nightmare group projects stories. So um, I think specifically the story we're going to share is in our first year when we had an installation project for our architecture course. So it was around like 12 to 13 people in a group, so quite a massive group. And we were tasked with making a life-size installation in a specific site. So I think with our installation, it ended up being around like two meters tall by like five to six meters wide. And Yenshan, what about yours? Oh, mine was like a few pieces of furniture, which were pretty big. How big were they? I Like the tallest one would be like a meter and a half and then like half a meter wide. And that's like three of those things around the room. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I guess it was made like even harder because of the fact that like we had just met everyone. So that was like at the start of first year when we didn't really know anyone. We were allocated into design groups randomly. At- yeah. So that's the context we have for the project. And I'll talk about a bit of like how my group project went down. So personally, I didn't think we had the best group dynamic um, because we were, as Yan Chan said, we were still getting to know each other and like figuring out how we would distribute the work because we were making very life-size things, you know, by hand in the workshop. And we had to use like wood, buying tons of materials, um, also trying to f- um, gather money to be able to purchase materials and put them together. Mm. So Wait, actually, I guess before that, we should talk about like the context of like what the project is about. So basically we had to, it was based on poems of in Metamorphoses. And then we had to, you each group was assigned a poem and then we had to co- not convert the poem, but like derive from the poem and installation based in, a very specific place called Walmart's Yard, which is like designed by a quite famous architect. And yeah, it seemed like a very abstract task at the time, I guess, which made it yeah. even harder. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So in my group, there were 13 people. And the way I would describe our group dynamic, I said this like quite a few handful of times, but I would describe our group dynamic as like a solar system. So basically there was like one person who knew the ins and outs of like how the whole installation would work like where the connection parts and then how tall is this part how we uh, construct that like he sort of knew everything and he was in constant communication with my tutor uh, in charge of our group and with the rest of the people they kind of like you know different planets as they move further away from the sun they sort of knew less and less about the project um so Mm -hmm. i guess i'm happy to say that i'm Mercury? Is it Mercury? (laughs) So I'm happy to say that I'm Mercury, so I can, like, the closest to the sun, I would say. Um, And so I still knew quite a bit of the thing, but I would, but I would still say that our dynamic wasn't the best because of just how, like, things were delegated. Um, So, you know, it might not have been fair at times because, you know, some people might think, oh, I'm doing a lot more work than the other. So there was a lot of conflict because just of people being like like unhappy with the amount of work that other people are doing which caused like conflicts and beef in like group chats and stuff and asking other Mm -hmm. people to do work when they've done a lot themselves you know um Mm -hmm. yeah and I think one thing I thought was quite interesting to see was sort of how the leader dynamic emerged so there wasn't like a time where the whole group came together and was like, okay, this person's going to be our leader. It wasn't like that. It just kind of naturally happened. So uh, this one person in our group sort of naturally became the leader without like appointment, basically. And I sort of became like the second leader, like vice leader, if that's even a word. 
And so I was sort of also helping with managing like what people were doing and what tasks uh, they were in charge of. So it was just kind of, I guess, interesting to see how that happened. And with hindsight, I think, you know, I think leaders might like naturally emerge just due to the situation or like their traits, you know, like their passion, like intelligence, how much they know communication skills or like how proactive they are. And, you know, like in my group, there was no chosen leader. So I feel like the solar system dynamic kind of just happened. And, you know, I didn't really know how to, you know, improve it. You know, like, what do you think? Yeah. Do you think like the leaders happened because of like, I feel like for for my group, it felt very much like it emerged based on who was in studio the most or like the longest. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like it was two things. It was like who was in studio longest and also like who could like, okay, I wouldn't say like um, suck up to tutors but like who could like present to tutors and like be and like the tutors it would interact with them and consider them the leader like the point of contact with the group so communication skills yeah i guess so which i guess is based on those two things but then i feel like is that do you think that's like a valid way to judge who becomes the leader because then the, the leader just becomes a person who can spend the most time in studio which i guess is also not a bad thing like like i'm glad i wasn't the leader and i'm glad that like i didn't spend more time in studio because it would to me it wouldn't have helped the project Mm. yeah i think like when there's no specific way of choosing a leader especially if you don't know anyone and the tutor didn't appoint anyone because again the tutor didn't know us that well as well i feel like we just sort of base on the most convenient and Mm. like you know our instincts of like what traits a leader should have you know like hard working so like staying in studio for long periods of time good communication skills so like they can present the stuff to the tutor very well i think these are traits that you know most people would just judge is a good leader but i think yeah. one thing that sort of is hard to judge is sort of how good they are in bringing yeah. people together i think that was a trait that maybe like our group didn't have i'm not sort of blaming anyone that happened in our group because i feel like we were under a lot of pressure as well so maybe a lot of focus wasn't put on the spirit of the team but more so on getting work done you know pumping out work and you know rushing for the deadline so i don't think we had the best spirit especially with the amount of um beef that happened and yeah. conflict that happened in our group um so i think with me because um i try to i i really want people to get along well and like seeing the conflict isn't really something that i'm happy with so Uh, essentially one thing that happened was I think this one person in our group based on what you said like he didn't appear in studio as often as other people did so naturally he was like very behind with the progress of the group which also led to people like people in the group not very happy with him so I think at one point I just had to like you know confront him like gently let him know that you know this is why like you know, people are sort of not happy with you because, you know, you're not showing up to studio as much and everyone's Mm -hmm. trying to put in an effort. But, you know, you're not putting in the work and the effort and the time for the project, so. Yeah. I I think it's hard to know, like, when to um, confront people like that or, like, at what level you have to be mean. Okay, I I wouldn't say mean. At what level you have to, like, tell people that that's, that like they have to work harder so I guess like because especially because there's no like um official leader it's very hard to step up and say like okay I guess it's my job to tell him to work harder so I think it's cool how you did that like how do you think that thought process happened I think it was mostly because like I just you know I feel like when conflict happens between like group mates I think that's sort of like a warning sign that something should be done you know to sort of help save the dynamic because everyone's a team Mm -hmm. right like you have the same goal like you should be working to the same thing towards the same thing so i think at that point i just felt like you know i should say something and try to at least like help the group a little bit with Mm -hmm. the spirit and the dynamic because i feel like work front is pretty all right like with the the other the other leader like delegating tasks and telling us what we had to do i think on that front was all right But just within the emotional part of like a group dynamic, it wasn't really working out. So Mm -hmm. I sort of took on that responsibility, I guess. I put it on myself to try and like make sure everyone was happy and like overlooking the dynamic, you know. But yeah. Yeah. Did did the same thing happen in your group? Like was the dynamic okay? Or Um, I think the dynamic was okay. (laughs) I think it's just like in, I think because my, my group was pretty... I think that's like some people in my group are pretty good, like pretty talented and mm. good at 
um, getting to things which are approved by the school, like the tutors like the stuff that they do. So then it was like, I think in our group was different in terms of who became a leader because it also depended a lot on like who got good feedback and then the people who got the best feedback would be motivated to take charge and we would let them take charge. So I guess I think that's okay. But I think it's just that um, because the, the group was pretty full of like ambitious, competitive people, it, be, it sometimes is a bit hard to determine like who leads yeah. and who it's a point of contact with the tutor because everyone wants to be that point of contact. Even though in hindsight, like it, like the tutors actually don't really care. Like you don't get extra points for being the leader. It yeah. just depends on how it ends up. Mm, so I think like when it came to hashing out conflicts, um, if you had disagreements, it was also a bit difficult because it would depend on, I think because there were like friend groups within the tutor group. So then the friend groups would like gang out and then push their idea through. So some ideas would just be completely uh, discarded. Okay. And it was also a bit hard to determine when you have to hash things out of people because like because there were, there were a few different friend groups. So when disagreements happened, it was quite... Like, we didn't confront each other directly. We had to, like gossip behind each other's backs because we could I guess we all knew like we had our own friends so then we gossip about like oh like yeah. you know they did this and then I think that was really bad like that was not good yeah. because that just makes the whole group seem like not one big entity so I guess that's yeah. also the part of the reason why we weren't super close yeah I think it was kind of bad in that way I just felt like we didn't get to know each other that well so I think the sort of bad dynamic happened because of that and also like with your way of like how you kind of select the leaders like based on the you know based on the work they've done and the stuff they presented to tutors and like the best ideas that sort of became the benchmark on who should be the leader but i guess in that scenario is probably very difficult which is why like in hindsight i feel like maybe it would be easier to select maybe once people got to know each other a bit better you know who's the best at you know negotiating things or like you know, the best at, you know, ma maintaining relations with other people. I feel like that's a very, like, important soft skill that gets overlooked. Like, we're so focused on, like, the hard skills and, like, how good they are at producing work, which sort of becomes the benchmark. And I don't think that's, like, the best way of analyzing it. But then again, like, in that scenario, I felt like that was the most easiest way to do it. So yeah. I think under the time pressure, like, I think all of us just, that was fine. Like, like we did the best we could. But I, I do agree that, like, maybe a better way to go about the group would just be to have clearer expectations of what everyone was meant to do every week and to have like to set out pretty uh in black and white or like pretty clearly what everyone's contribution was maybe maybe that would yeah. have been better because i i did feel like the work distribution was unequal but it was also unequal because a lot of people like didn't know what to do not because people didn't want to do anything yeah, I think, like, if we move on to, like, the reasons why we didn't think it worked out, or, like, just in general, like, yeah. why group projects fail in general, like you said, like, I think people have different expectations, so I feel like it was really important in the beginning, like, especially with our projects and other projects as well, just to, like, establish what the end goals were, like, what were we looking for, you know, because I feel like sometimes people have different expectations, which leads to, like, conflicts, you know, like, if they have one thing in mind and the said leader had, like, another thing in mind, it's just easy to, you know, have conflict. Especially, yeah. like, what you said, if everyone wasn't close with each other and they're talking behind each other's backs, you know, that's also really bad because of the different expectations, you know? So it's just hard, I think, in that way. Yeah. I think this was also uh, tricky because of the conflicts happening due to, like, different cultures, I think. Mm. Because it, it, it was kind of obvious in my group that, like, the Asians would stick together. I think that's quite bad, but the Asians stick together and then, like, the uh, like the locals would have, like, a different point of view. So I think that made it more difficult to communicate at the start because it also, like, the way that we express uh, our expectations and what we expect each other to do is quite different. Like, like I guess in British culture, it's, like, quite, it's that you have to be quite polite, but... I think in Asian culture, you're even more polite and like, you're even more like, um, 
like like subtle like like you don't tell people what to do you just say like oh um i think that this would be better if something 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 so like it's just like different ways of talking which was also a bit tricky yeah i think especially because we're in a very like international environment so with like so many different cultures it's probably gonna be a little bit tricky so i think it's just being more understanding and like you know willing to step out of your comfort zone because i think the whole asian stick together thing is like another psycholo- psychology phenomenon within itself <laughs> like i think it's true um but you know for me like i try not to do that i know it's like a very familiar feeling but like i just try to step out of my comfort zone a little bit more and talk to like you know other people you know just to learn more because you know you're on university and you're yeah. there to like learn new perspectives but at the same time, I could understand, like, if you're from, like, a certain culture and that's what you're most familiar with, like, going to a new place, seeing people who share the same culture and thoughts as you is, like, very comforting. But I just think, you know, you should step out of your comfort zone a little bit more, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's true. But I think it's also different for different people, but depending on if you went to international school where there were, like, yeah. other people from different cultures already, or if you just came from, like, a local school. Yeah, that's true. And I feel like the other thing that might have made like group projects like more difficult to work with is like inefficient systems. So like we tried, I think, with on our group, like we had like a Google Drive, like a shared drive and like a communication system, which is, I guess, mostly WhatsApp. But I don't know, I feel like there could be like a more um, efficient way of doing it because I felt like it was a lot of just talking on WhatsApp. Like I felt like if there was a platform to you know, have very clear tasks list out and people could say like, I finished this, I finished that. I think it would be more efficient. Maybe if there's a platform, um, you know, I think that would yeah. be really good because I feel like the system we had was very inefficient. I don't know if it's the yeah. same with you. Um, I thought it was like the drive was, but I also think that stuff like productivity platforms like Teams or Slack or Asana and stuff, it's good to assign tasks, but it's also everyone has to, be on board for it to do work, it. if that makes yeah. sense. And I feel like it wouldn't have worked in that case because like people would not be on board to do that yeah. kind of thing. And also it's very hard every week, like at this at the beginning of the project when we hadn't we didn't know what the final thing was gonna look like, like to really say like what you have to do every week. If that makes sense. Yeah. Because it was so like creative. And abstract. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think yeah. it works in general, just maybe not yeah. for this creative project. Or maybe I think it would work maybe for like the final stages when everyone was like very sure of what it was going to look like. So you had like you're in charge of making this part and you're in charge of making this joint, this connection. And then I feel like that would be more clear to use those type of communications as well. Because I think at the end, we were still very unsure because of the whole solar system thing. Like the message just passes on from person to person. Like some people just don't know what's going on. And yeah. I think that was also a problem. Like, not everybody was kept in the loop because not everything was being said on the WhatsApp group chat. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. I think we could implement more of those, like, platforms that you just mentioned. Mm, yeah. And, and, yeah. But also maybe just even when you were in studio and in real life when we had um, team meetings and stuff, it could also have helped just to have, like, a clearer agenda for every meeting. Yeah. Or, like, to specify that, like, we're going to have a meeting at this time. I remember, like, we tried to do that, but people just, like, wouldn't show up or, like, would, Mm. would, like, say things like, oh, um, tell someone to to say this at the meeting because I can't make it. And that becomes, like, a bit strange. Yeah, I think it's hard when people don't put in the same amount of effort that other people are putting, which I guess makes the conflict, like, even worse. But I think in some, like, cases, it's just hard to avoid, you know? Like, you can't control other people, so you can only just do your best and with other members that, you know, want to try for the project. Mm, So, yeah. But I think also a part is also, like, maybe bad communication, like what we said. So maybe just, like, improving the communication can really help. Especially, like, again, I I think this is just going back to the whole platforms thing. But, um, yeah. And then I think the, the... I think with the conflicts thing, like, a very, very big part of it is, like, the mindset of, like, me and you and like us versus them Mm. which is like what you talked about like with their friend groups like people having different friend groups within the group and then they have their own circle and then talk behind other people's backs yeah i feel like with a group project i think it's just very important i guess this is the leader's job or the leader that appeared 
you know, out of nowhere that emerged. Um, his job to sort of talk to everyone and say, this is our goal. You know, this is what we should focus on and like not divert from that because we're all supposed to be working together for like one shared goal. Um, but I think if within the group, if we have the whole, oh, we did this, but they didn't, or I did this, but he didn't do it. I think it's just very damaging to the whole like group dynamic. I mean, sure, you can talk about it with your friends just to like rant it out, you know, get your emotions out. But I think like implementing that in the the group chat or just talking to it within people in the group, I think just really like ruins the dynamic and like the progress of the group, you know? Yeah, but actually, um, I guess that's also true but i think i disagree that it's like the leader's job to to like hash out co- to like hash out conflicts or like or like to to say that to like delegate work and stuff because i feel like in this context it's like it, it would it, it, i think it would have been better if everyone was just more professional and more like um like took more ownership of the project so that when you want to complain about something it's I think it's okay to rant it to rant to your friends, but it's also you can't do that without telling the person whom you're unhappy with why you're unhappy with them. Like I feel like you have to do both. Like like like, like you can rant it to your friends, but you can you also should like hash out conflicts and really try to get to the bottom of why you're disagreeing. And also ha- establishing that like the disagreement is not personal. It's because of we're trying to make like the project work. Yeah, I feel yeah, like with some people really- it became very personal. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Like, um, I think just within, like, architecture, like, a lot of criticisms, people take it quite personally. I think it's just, you know, it's based on the work. It's not really about you. It's about Mm -hmm. the project. And, um, yeah. But to be fair, like, for the whole leaders thing, like, I think it's very difficult to set the same expectation for everyone to, like, remain professional and do it because this is very Mm -hmm. difficult. Mm -hmm. I think it's nice. I guess it's not the leader's responsibility, but I feel like it would be nice if he or she, you know, sort of, made this clear in the beginning yeah and said that this is like the expectation that that everyone yeah everyone should be looking for you know like if you're unhappy with anything just like voice your opinion and whoever is on the receiving end of any constructive criticism needs to know that it's not personal and this is just for the greater good of the project because we all share the same goal i think that's really important and you know i think people are just generally scared of confrontations like like Mm -hmm. in 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 theory it makes total sense to say that if you're complaining about this person to your friends, you should really talk to them as well. But I know some people are just very scared with like confrontations, you know, telling people. I think a really good thing I learned, I guess, um, from a book is that, you know, when you want to, you know, ask somebody to do something or you have like an issue with them, you sort of sandwich it in between like two two, um, compliments. compliments. Yeah which makes the delivery like a bit better you know and more gently to let them down to know to let them know it's not personal you know like say for example you're like oh yeah you know thank you for that day when you did this when you did x and then you're like also you know here's the thing like um you know blah 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 blah. and then you sort of bring out the problem the issue but then like don't really point fingers just say how it affected the project like yeah. for example, if you think the person's not showing up to studio as much, you're like, you know, here's the thing. Like, I feel like it'd be really nice for everyone to, you know, have a group meeting on weekends where we can all sit down and discuss a project. And I think it's very difficult if like some people are not showing up. I think that really affects the group dynamic. And you know, we're just all looking out for the outcome of the project. I just think this is really important, and it would mean a lot to me and the group. You know, if we can all yeah. come together. I yeah. think that would be a really nice way of saying it, instead of like pointing fingers and being like, oh, why didn't you show up on the weekends? You yeah. know, I think it would be a much nicer way to like appease yeah. and like smooth out the conflict. Yeah. And it's also something to like, um, which is why like people con- people emphasize networking and making connections because it's also much easier to do these things when you have like a personal connection to the person. Like you are, you feel like you guys are friends and that you can talk about things unrelated to work as well and I think that yeah. was something that I think my group lacked which would have been nice if my group had it where we had like personal camaraderie and we all felt like we were part of the same part of the same team instead yeah. of like competing against each other yeah I think that was a really big thing too especially because we were in a course so we felt like our grades were the most important and maybe some people just felt like we were all competing against each other which is actually totally just stupid I feel like we were all in this together you know like 
we're all trying to work towards the same thing. Like, you know, it's. I think it's just better if we help yeah. each other. I genuinely thought sometimes like, oh, maybe you would get extra points if you were the leader and stuff. But it really was not like that. It just depended on your like final drawings. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna lie and say that I didn't think that. Obviously, I think everyone of everyone has those thoughts, but I just think it's. I think the connections you build and the friendships you make in uni is like more important, you know. And as in for the bigger picture, um, especially I think with um, architecture and any per- like creative courses, mm-hmm. I think the most important thing is really just like your portfolio and like mm-hmm. your thinking process behind it. Because I think it's really hard to put a grade on something mm-hmm. that's so like objective, sorry, mm-hmm. subjective. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, uh, I guess so. Oh, I I feel like that's also something which could have been improved. I, not in terms of the group dynamic, but also in like this is not really group dynamic, I guess. But like being clear about what how we were graded and how we would be awarded marks would have helped the group dynamic as well. Like if we had just known how to how the project was gonna be marked, and like that it was based on drawings instead of based on who talked the most, then it would have been better. I guess so, but I think maybe at the same time they were trying to simulate like how a group work would be like in the real That's world, true. like if you were working. Um, I think the only That's difference true. is just we were getting graded, so maybe it was a bit more difficult. But at the same time, I could also argue that this is the sort of thing that we would have to go through if we yeah, were actually working true. in real in life. Project. Yeah. yeah, and you wouldn't know anyone. But I yeah. think the only difference is also we would be there would probably be like an appointed project manager. Mm. So there would be someone to take responsibility and overlook the whole project, which was different to school now. But mm-hmm. yeah, I still think it was a valuable experience because, you know, even like super bad stuff happened in my group specifically. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't regret like doing it. I still thought it was a good experience. And, you know, actually seeing how bad, I guess, the group dynamic can get at some point when things are not going well. And, you know, people were unhappy with the amount of work that other people were doing. Yeah. So it was a valuable work learning experience for me. Yeah. I think yeah, I think I think it was good for me too. And it really set up the next set up the next projects that came like in the at the end of the first year and into second year. Like it I think the main takeaways that I realized was like you have to you sh- I, I preferred it much more personally when I developed like personal relationships with people and if I mm-hmm. could talk to them about stuff. So I feel like that And then the other thing was also that it's like not embarrassing and it's not cringy to like make the first move and to like be the one to make the group chat and get everyone to like start talking about it. Like even though you take charge at the start, doesn't mean you become like the de facto leader for the rest of the project. It's just like it helps to set up a good atmosphere at the beginning and it's and it's fine to do that. So that's what I found. Yeah, I guess we can move on to like, you know, what factors would like help make a group project work better it's not like the like the ultimate solution to make it work but i feel like it's quite a few points that i think are worth mentioning you know to Mm -hmm. help at least you know improve the group dynamics of a group project Mm -hmm. so i feel like the first thing i think like the most important thing like what you said is like set up a good communication system with the example of you know making the first move because i think like you said like a lot of people are just really scared of making the first move for I don't know if it's obvious reasons. I think they just don't want to seem like being over proactive. Like, why do you think people are scared of making the first move? I don't know. Like, I think people think it's cringy. <laughs> it's like cringy <laughs> to um, have to be the one to, I guess, because you're sacrificing like a bit of pride by doing it. Like, like you're, I don't know. To be honest, I don't really know. Like, I, yeah. even I think it's a bit, even I think it's like cringy and I don't even know why I think it's cringy. Yeah, maybe this is worth exploring. I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of weird. I think it's because you don't want people to see you as like a very like per- like a person that cares too much yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. like maybe like you want to cool. appear as Yeah, you want to appear like a chill, cool person yeah. that like, yeah, we're okay with the project. We're going to nail yeah. it without and Maybe being you don't like- want to be like the like the controlling freak, like the control freak either. Yeah. And I think it's also people don't want to like other people to see them in the light of like like you said, like controlling and like wanting to lead, you know, I think that was, yeah, I think we sort of analyzed it quite well. Um, But yeah, I think making the first move really doesn't mean anything. Like if anything, people just forget 
and they're like, okay, cool. Like, we'll just, you know, get work done. I really don't think it's a big deal. You know, like if somebody else made the group chat in my group, I'll be like, oh, great. You know, somebody did that. I'll be happy. Like, I wouldn't be judging them. Be like, oh, this person made a group chat. But maybe it's different for other people. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. I would be happy as well. So, I don't know. (laughs) So, yeah. But yeah, I think making the first move is key. You know, if nobody is making the first move. Well, I think by default, you should probably just try and make the first move. And then, you know, take pro- uh, take initiative, like ask for contacts. And then like maybe take charge in the beginning. So like a good atmosphere can be like created within the group. You know, like having a WhatsApp group and then mm-hmm. just, you know, get everyone to start talking about the project. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the thing that I usually do is because, as you know, I... I think I'm the person that always makes the first move and make the group chat because I identify myself as a workaholic. So I really like just to get stuff done right in the beginning. So I do think maybe people see me as like a controlling person. Maybe. Like I would make the group chat and then I would like, I probably, I would send like a massive message and then I'll just be like, okay guys, this is what we're going to do. You know, by Sunday, we should do that, do that, do that, do that. And maybe this is kind of annoying, but I, at the same time, also feel like it's a very good way of setting like clear guidelines, which is, I guess, my second point. It's like setting very clear goals and like clear roles of what each person is doing. So people are like more like more accountable, mm-hmm. you know, like so they know what they're doing. So if mm-hmm. at one point like something is missing, you know what, you know, like who, who didn't do their part. It. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's a different style from me. Um because I, I don't like to be the one to delegate things, but I like to like um, persuade them to do it without saying, telling them to do it, which I think is not great either. Because sometimes it's like very indirect. But then I guess what I mean is that I would like be, I would be the first one to make the group chat, and then I would be the first one to volunteer to do something. But because, mm-hmm. but then I would then I would just have other things to do. But then kind of like force them to take to choose so yeah. i think like like i i like doing this thing where i like give people like three like two options and one of them is like obviously worse than the other so that they so that they pick the better one but that's because i want them to do the other option <laughs> so like, okay, okay. well yeah i mean i don't force people to do tasks i think it's more so that once i set up the group chat we had a meeting and then at the end you sort of create jobs and then you ask oh would yeah. you be happy with doing that i think that's better yeah. i i don't force people to do tasks that's really bad um yeah I, yeah i think like um setting out the task is actually really important like and it's actually something that someone has to do like it doesn't come across it doesn't come about organically yeah i think yeah. it's just easier because you're sort of like like that dividing the the main task into smaller more manageable tasks for people to do and then like those are the building blocks that make mm. up the final task which mm. is i think the better way to do it which also brings me to the to, which also brings me to my next point of like having mini deadlines you know when you have these small tasks it's better to set mini deadlines for them so say like say by monday we want everyone to finish their mini task by this week and then we can move on to the next segment with the next set of mini tasks that has a next set of mini deadline and i think mm-hmm. that's just a better way to progress you know what do you yeah. think i think mini deadlines is good but they can also feel very limiting especially in a creative industry yeah so i feel like all that worked for like the projects which were not so creative but it might not have worked for like for example, the first year group project that we talked about just now, mm. where it was very ambiguous what the tasks were. Yeah, but to be fair, I feel like for our um, group project, I feel like tutorials were basically the deadlines. That's of true. That's true. Our project, so it was easier to manage in that way. So I think our deadline was every week because we had tutorials every week for the architecture project. So I think in that sense each person sort of had like a sort of idea of what they were supposed to do within a week to show the tutor and the rest of the group what they've come up with so i guess that's more manageable you know yeah yeah so i think the same same guidelines can be applied to like other group projects you know i think it's just easier to manage when you have smaller deadlines but yeah and then i think the next one is probably the hardest thing is like in in the in the unlikely or likely scenario that some people are just not responsive or not putting in the effort for the group project. I think there's two ways to do this. 
Like the first way is to like confront the person, which is probably the first thing you should do if things are really not working out. You should probably confront them in a mm-hmm. more gentle way with the technique that I shared just now with the uh, sandwiching critique between compliments <laughs> technique. I think that's the best way to go about it. And like, but also I think to do it to... like in a in a one to one fashion. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And I not yeah. in front of everyone. Yeah, definitely not. That would be like very, very bad. Like you're singling them out. Um, yeah, and I just think appealing to them in an emotional way about how this is affecting the group dynamic and the outcome and how this is a shared mm-hmm. thing. I think that was really important to me, especially when I had to do it with one of my groupmates yeah. in the project. I think that was what I focused on. Um, and then I think if it's still not working, you know, maybe this is a time to bring it to like your professor or like your tutor, or I guess in the workplace, probably your supervisor, you know, because sometimes it just doesn't work out, you know, and it's just hard, you know, for the whole group. So if you think this is really a problem, I think you should just probably voice it out to your professor. But in the scenario where they're going to be like, sorry, you know, it's hard for us to, you know, do any changes with the group work. Like sometimes you just have to suck it up, you know, sometimes you just you know, you're unlucky and you have to do it, but it will be a valuable learning experience. Yeah, you know? I actually think that um, in cases like these, it, yeah, bring it to the professor, the, the professor, the tutor is fine, but I also think that they wouldn't do anything. And also it's better for the group if we solve it ourselves. So like we solve it democratically, like, okay, since you're not going to respond, because I, I, I had a group project like this and then I would, ask the person one-on-one whether they're going to show up and then if they don't then and, and if, if, if they still don't uh like if they give a lot of excuses and they don't put in the effort then i think okay this is this is, this is going to sound quite bad but kind of like bringing it up in front of the whole group to not to embarrass them but just to like let the group confront him as well to like make the person know that all of us feel this way it's not just me being a bitch yeah not just you being petty but yeah i think i think that would be like sort of the last resort if you had to like do it in your own group you know like i feel like obviously yeah. one-to-one is better but if it's really not working out then you kind of have to resort to making the whole group like let the person acknowledge that it's really not working out you know yeah that's true yeah but most of the time in, in uni group projects i think people suck it up instead of <laughs> confront because it's just easier yeah, I think so. Maybe it's just for me, like, I really don't like, like, not taking action and just, like, dealing with it in a very passive way. So i would be more inclined yeah. to, you know, confront in a very gentle way um, and, like, try and make the dynamic work because I feel like, at least it's a challenge, right? Like, you're trying to make things work. That's, like, problem solving, you know? Yeah. So I think that was, like, impor- important to me. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, sometimes it just doesn't work out and you just have to suck it up and... That's part of learning as well. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, I think that was pretty good. That was... Yeah. So I'll do a quick summary again. Mm-hmm. So um, we sort of talked about, like, reasons why they f- why group projects fail. And in our, like, discussion, we sort of talk about having different expectations, inefficient systems, bad communication, team conflicts, and the me versus you or the us versus them mindset, which is very damaging to group dynamics. And then in terms of, Um, ways to kind of solve this problem and try and build try to build a better group dynamic we sort of talked about setting up a good communication system making the first move and just not care about what other people will think because it's you and your project and also setting up very clear goals and clear roles of what each person's gonna do without shoving it down their throats (laughs) and then having like sort of expectations what you have and setting many deadlines at the end of each meeting if you're meeting up like every week or depending on how you space out your meetings and your talks and then also Mm -hmm. if really worse comes to worse there's a person not cooperating and you really can't find a way to make it better you can confront them in a very gentle way or you can bring it up to your supervisor if that's a problem. Or maybe you just have to suck it up in the end because, you know, sometimes that's just life and we can't control everything that happens in life. So, yeah. Do you have anything to add, Yanshan? Mm, no, I think that was mainly what it was. Yeah, but I think I just maybe highlight that another reason group projects feel would be like having different culture yeah. shock and like coming from different backgrounds, which I guess is part of different expectations, but also it's 
something that we can actively work against as well. Yeah. And I think the I think the last thing I just want to conclude with is no matter what happens in a group project, just treat it as like a learning experience and an opportunity. And no matter what happens, just enjoy the process, even though sometimes it may be unpleasant. And I think we'll end it on that. So yeah, thank you for listening. Bye. Bye.